Greetings, friends. I want to share some thoughts with you from a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus. We find this in the part of the Bible we call the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. And Paul writes these words in verse 7 through uh, 10. He says, In Jesus, in him, we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation, the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him, in Jesus. Now, I'm reading that for you because I want the, you to understand that the apostles understood the mysteries of God. And, and what is a mystery? A mystery is something that God reveals. It's a secret. It's something that God reveals in order to bring someone close. And, and the disciples understood this. They understood the mysteries of God. And, and for me, I grew up as a Lutheran, and we were a sacramental church which means that we looked at the, uh, the, the communion, the, the, the Lord's tup, Supper, as a holy event, that it wasn't just symbolic and remembering uh, that this was uh, the, the body and blood of Christ, but we looked at it as the body and blood of Christ, that somehow in, with, and under this bread and, and fruit of the vine was the real presence uh, of Jesus Christ, his physical presence in his body and blood. This is a mystery. And as you think about it, it's not just bread and wine to, to represent something, but in essence, as, as the Bible says, it's the body and blood of Christ. It is the immortal Jesus Christ himself, his body and blood coming into your mortal body. And it comes into us to, to reassure us and, and strengthen us and, and to fill us. You know, I'm reminded of the Bible when it says, by the stripes of Jesus were healed that by his broken body, the scars on his back and his hands and his head, that crown of thorns, the, the spear's hole in his side, his feet, all those scars were endured for our physical healing. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah and 2 Peter, that by the stripes of Jesus Christ were healed. And it also says that by his blood, the Yom Kippur lamb that was celebrated in the Old Testament becomes the Lamb of God. That's what John the Baptist said. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. That Jesus was the Lamb of God. His blood was shed that we would be redeemed from all our sin. So in his broken body we're healed and in his blood we are redeemed. And this is a mystery, but I believe that in, in communion it, it's also an opportunity for the immortal Jesus himself to come into our life for healing and, and, and forgiveness. I'm reminded of Psalm 103, verse 3. God forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. And I've been in a healing ministry for over 25 years. And I've been around the world. I've been to 70 countries on, on six continents. And I've seen the power of God move the mystery of healing through the broken body of Jesus and the redemptive power to redeem us through his blood. So when I take communion, it's not just a symbolic act. It is the immortal Jesus himself coming into my life to be part of me, to, re to reassure me. And it's the same in my healing ministry. I carry oil with me everywhere I go. And I anoint the sick with oil. Why? Because in James 5, it says, if anyone's sick, go to the elders of the church. They lay hands on them and anoint them with oil and pray for healing. Now, to me, this oil is not just a symbol. It is the reality of God's presence. You know, in the Old Testament, they had to anoint every vessel. Every, everything used for God was anointed and set apart, sanctified, set apart for God's holy purposes and couldn't be used for anything else. And so for me, oil represents not God only, but it, it's a moment when in, that when this oil is applied, the immortal God himself comes down and puts his finger on our mortal body and releases something divine. That's a mystery. It's a sacred moment. It's not just something that represents, it is the moment when the, the immortal God comes down and touches our immortal body. And when God touches you, something 
profound happens, occurs in your life. So think about it for just a moment. Think about it just a moment. You know, when, I, when you take communion, is it more than just representing something or is it when God himself comes in and infuses himself into your life for restoration and redemption? That's what I believe. Same with this healing oil. When I anoint the sick with oil, it's a moment when the divine presence of God puts his finger and releases the immortal presence of God, releases something into our mortal body. And transformation takes place. For me, friends, that is the mystery Paul is talking about in, in Ephesians. And I believe he understood this, and, and the early church understood this, and they moved in this power. And they saw great and wonderful things happening. It wasn't them, the human aspect. It was the divine coming into contact with the mortal and releasing awesome power for redemption and restoration. You know, I'm sharing this with you, with you because I want you to just kind of open your mind for a moment to the fullness of God and what he wants to do. And, and if you're struggling with this, pray that the Holy Spirit would open your mind to the fullness of what God wants to say to you in your heart and in your mind right now. But I, I want you to know where I'm coming from again. And I believe in moments, the divine presence of God, the immortal God, engages with us, the, the mortal. And in that moment, awesome things happen. That's a mystery that I celebrate and share with you. Amen? Look, if you want to comment to me, reach out right now. Touch that comment button on Facebook and send me a comment. Or if you want to go to my, my website, paulteskeyministries.com, hit the prayer button. You can not only, not only ask for prayer, but ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer to you. Or go to my message shows on uh, Facebook. But I'm doing this for you because I want you to understand that the fullness of God's love for you is beyond anything you or I could comprehend. It's just staggering that he would love us as his beloved sons and daughters through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So reach out to me. I want, I'm here for you and I'm doing this for you, trying to enlighten your horizons based on, on God's word. Amen. And all God's people said, amen.